Hey y'all, Kentucky Farmer here, and in this video I want to talk about the economy of the Hyzomat heating plant. So this is a placeable that comes stock with the game. I'm sure most of you have probably seen this by now. And it allows you to sell wood chips and it, you know, pays you for them. It's just basically an additional sale point for wood chips. But it's a little weird because it's different, right? So if we look in here at our prices tab, we can see that the Stanton Sawmill is listed, but there isn't a listing for the Heisemat. So you don't really know how much it's gonna pay you uh, for, for each load. Uh, and that's kind of, you know, I've been evaluating whether or not I should use these in my Let's Play series, and I had quite a few people recommend that I don't use it, right? Just <laughs> avoid it because of that reason you don't know how much it's gonna pay you so I was kind of intrigued by that and I wanted to figure out why is it that you don't know that or you know is there what's the math behind it right so I ran a couple different tests and I started to see a pattern so I basically was just taking uh, load after load, I've got this placeable wood chip thing here, and I filled it with wood chips. And then I was just taking load after load after load after load, selling them. And kind of, you know, selling them here, selling them at the sawmill, and kind of comparing what prices I got at each place and what affects it. And um, what I determined was after you sell, uh, let me back up a minute. You could place as many of these as you want. You know, you can fill the map with them, right? And they always gave me the same price for the first load, right? So that was the first thing that I thought was interesting, is the first trailer load that I dropped off, it, it, as long as it's the same volume, right? So you're selling the same amount. The first load that you sold was always the same amount. The second was always the same amount. The third was always the same amount. So I could put, you know, four different ones and the fourth load at all four would be the same price, right? So th they were like really consistent about that, which isn't how the normal in-game economy stuff works, right? So there's um, the, the fluctuation selling here is different, right? This was always just kind of a linear decline. The more I sold, the less money I got. And there, there's two things that I figured out with that is it never goes back up, no matter how long you wait. So I would fast forward the game for literally weeks. I've got video recording of me <laughs> letting the game fast forward for weeks, both using the fast forward mod and using the in-game 120x fast forward. And the price never recovered and it, it just blew my mind but the other thing that was interesting is once you sell a hundred thousand liters the price stops dropping so there's a floor it'll never go below the price that it gives you after you sell a hundred thousand liters no matter how much you sell here so those two things kind of intrigued me and then uh let me all right, and so then the next thing that I found that was kind of interesting here, let me show you this. So this is the vehicle's XML in the save game file. This is kind of where a lot of this stuff is tracked. And if we find, let me find a good example here. All right, so this is actually tracking the market prices here. So here's the, the bakery. Here's the market price for wheat at the bakery. And it uses these price curves to um, kind of cause those the, the market prices that we're used to seeing now in the, um, the economy tab. And, and this is how it determines how that price is fluctuating over time. And this is the file that saves it so that when you, you know, you're in the game doing something, you save it, you leave, you come back in, all the market prices are where they were when you left off. Well, what's interesting is the highs of mat doesn't have an entry in here for a price curve. So I started looking at all the save files. There is nothing in any of the save files that keeps track of the Heizomat as far as 
what the current price is and how much was sold at it. So I thought, okay, well, this is interesting. I save my game, go back out, come back in, sell a trailer load, it's back up at the top. That's the key. Every time you leave the game and come back in, it resets the Heizomats and they start buying at the top again. And then every bit that you sell has like a linear effect on the price down to the floor and then it won't drop anymore until you leave, come back in, and then it starts at the top again and keeps coming back down. So I thought, okay, well this is, you know, this is getting very interesting then. So I did a little bit of math here and uh, you can see that I did uh, hard, normal, and easy. And I used the little Brantner that holds uh, 8,500 liters. And I did 14 trips, each one, because it takes uh, 12 to hit 100,000, right? And I, that's what, remember, that's why I said that's where you see your floor. So on hard mode, it starts off paying $142 a ton and will drop to the floor of $85 per ton as you sell. Normal, it starts at 256, goes to the floor of 154. Easy starts at 427 and drops to 256 as you sell. And it will pay you this price um, for the whole load. And so it won't change the buy price until the second loading event, right? So then I, I left and came back in and I ran another test using a modified trailer that holds 100,000 liters. And it paid me $142 a liter for all 100,000 liters. And then the second time it paid me $85 a liter because I had hit that 100,000 threshold and so it was paying me the floor then. So uh, this these are the numbers, right? So 142 per ton, 85 floor, 256 ceiling, 154 floor, 427 ceiling, 256 floor. So now that we know those numbers, we can look at the market prices. And uh, if we look here at wood chips, and this is from a previous video where I collected this information. If we're looking at average, that initial buy price is basically average. It's actually better on easy, but then for normal and hard, it's pretty much average. So while, while this thing isn't gonna give you a great price, if you only sell one load every time you load the game, it's gonna give you an okay price. So, you know, then it, it, it's still kind of iffy as to whether or not these things are actually worth it because it's really not that hard to put your wood chips in storage and wait for the in-game price to go above these numbers. Uh, it would, it, it's, it's pretty common for wood chips to go above this, right? And then you can go sell a load. So the only time I could see these things really coming in handy is because <clears throat> the market price, you can depress that price by selling a large quantity, right? So if I'm selling, you know, 300,000 liters every hour of wood chips because I'm on a logging map and all I'm doing is making wood chips, you can depress the market price for wood chips at the sawmill. And that's the only place you can sell it. So if you add a whole bunch of these into your game, you could sell, you know, you could have three or four of these in a row sell a tr one trailer at each one, save your game, come back in, sell one trailer at each one, and you could keep doing that and you could get the best price then. Uh, and so it kind of just depends on your gaming strategy. Now, I will say, again, based on the numbers, easy is where this one kind of makes sense. If you're playing on easy, the price you're gonna get for selling that first trailer load uh, at one of these heating plants on easy is, is actually pretty good. So if anyone's interested, this is kind of the equation here. Uh, it's not exactly right. So the game is doing something else. There's, it's, it's off by a little bit from what I observed, but it's close enough that you could punch numbers in here and 
get a good understanding of what's going to happen. So you have your ceilings, which for hard is 142, normal 256, easy 427, floor of hard 85, normal 154, easy 256. Uh, X is the amount that you've already sold in liters. Y is the amount that you are selling in liters. And then Z will be how much it's going to pay you. And you can just plug that into this equation here. And in this example, I said uh, 34,000 liters that I've already sold. I'm going to sell 8,500. So I punch those numbers in on hard mode. And I got 1,042. If we come back over here... So already sold 34, sell 85, 1,044. So I'm off by $2. So there's something in the equation that's a little bit off, but it's uh, good enough that you could, uh, if you're keeping track of it, kind of punch it in any point and figure out what the price would be. So even though, that does, even though the Heizomat itself doesn't actually tell you what the current going price is, uh, knowing all this information now, you could if you wanted to keep track of it and figure out what the, the price is. So, all right, well, in the description, I will put a link to this document and a link to the equation. And hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, would you please give it a thumbs up? That helps a lot. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more farming simulator videos. I'm Kentucky Farmer. Thanks for watching.